Hello everyone and welcome to our Stack From Scratch series here on YouTube, a series where you can follow me on my journey in becoming stacked from nothing, covering all kinds of ways to make money, build your account, and all the PVMing tips and rotations you'll need to get to the end game in RuneScape 3. The goals in this episode are to start some PVM on the account and test the water with some Araxor, and maybe even give you guys some tips to help you guys out. We also have a ton of clues stockpiled, so let's complete them and get even closer to finishing off our Globetrotter outfit, and maybe even luck out on a big ticket item. Seventy-six percent of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, so if you're enjoying the guides and episodes, make sure you smash the subscribe button so that we can grow this community together. A big shout out to everyone out there that's already subbed. You truly are all amazing. You're all legends, honestly. Right, so to kick things off, I actually have a ton of random stuff in the bank from drops, dailies, the lot. I want to sell all of this stuff and see how much extra money we can make from it. I've put our other cash stack in the bank and we'll see how much we can actually get for selling all this random stuff. We also have over a thousand of the red sandstone and the crystal flex sandstone as well. We could sell this for about 20 mil if we convert it into the glass. But like I've been saying, I want to save this up to get the blessed prayer flask on the account. It's, it's not really a necessary item and it is pretty much just a luxury item at this point. But just getting it will be something cool that we can actually do in the series. So I'm just going to let that build up over time and eventually we'll make that on the account. One of the better things about actually selling all of this stuff from the bank, we can actually clean it up a little bit. I've kind of let the bank get out of hand over the past few weeks. So at the same time, we'll kill two birds with one stone and we'll get rid of all of the items in here that we don't actually need. So when we upgraded to the Drygores and the Superior Vesta's Spear, I actually forgot to sell the Ripper Claws, Twin Fury Blades and Miziari that we have in the bank. But it's just nice to know that when I can eventually be bothered to dissolve the gizmo on these, we'll have a nice chunk of change from them. So we've been able to clear up the bank a fair bit. I'm going to put some of the Alks in terms of the Dinosaur Hides and the Relics from Elite Dungeon 3 in our Auto Alkas in the Invention Guild. But other than that, we was able to sell off a load of stuff and get ourselves another 50 million. We are also able to sell off 13 of our adolescent dragons. We were able to get ourselves 450k each, so we sold these for a total of 5.8 mil. And this is going to give us a profit of 2.6 mil. And that's just the dragons. Wait until we start selling Zygomites and investing in our dinosaur farm, then we're going to start seeing a ton of money from player owned farm. As it's the end of the month, I'm going to actually go do my oyster. For those of you that are unaware, you can basically get a free roll at Clue Scrolls from the oyster every month. And you can actually reset this using your monthly resets. So unfortunately, we weren't able to even get a fortunate from three of these. As you can see on screen, like we, we made about 100k from each of them. Either way, if you do this on your account, you get a ton of fishing and farming XP. So if that's something you need on your account, it's well worth doing. And you also have a chance of getting yourself some decent money from the oyster itself. I completely forgot that when you have the premiere package on RuneScape 3, you can actually do the premiere vault every single month. I am pretty sure the meta strategy for doing this is just by running around looting the biggest chest that you can and saving the colossal chest in the middle until your time is just about to run out. That way, when the timer actually ends, you can carry on doing the animation. And because the colossal one has the longest animation, you want to keep that till the end. In terms of the loot from this, like this is great if you need to max or level up some skills or whatnot if you have the premier artifact. Purely due to the fact you get a ton of lamps. By the looks of it, you just get rewards that you would get from the treasure hunter wheel. We got some protein traps, we got some springs, and we also was able to get ourselves a load of XP lamps as well. Unfortunately, I don't really know what I want to level up with these lamps. But if you're an account that still needs to get some levels, then this is going to be great for you. And personally for us, 100 springs for the spring cleaner are going to save us a little bit of money. So I'm glad I've done this. And I'll probably continue doing this now even more. So I haven't got 5,000 reputation for the gobies so that I can re-roll the drops at BM and Yakamari. I never really actually done my daily Nemi forest or anything like that. But e either way, we just unlocked the goby pet and it looks pretty cool. I might have to have this guy follow us about for a little bit. Why are you bullying me? So now that we have 190 mil to play with on the account, I actually want to grab ourselves an amulet of souls. It'll be great for AFK and Gregorovich, but it is actually a really nice upgrade for pretty much anywhere in the game that you take a lot of damage or need extra heals. It'll be useful for us at Nex, Araxor, a lot of Slayer tasks, Gregorovich, Hellwiv, Indicta, like tons of content this will be useful for us at. And it only costs 70 mil. Once again, I'm going to take 70 mil from our account and buy some shards. And then that way we don't have to buy an extra amulet of souls. And we're still going to be left with over 110 mil after this as well, which is pretty nice. So first kill of the trip, we get ourselves a dormant anima core helm. 
I suppose we can't be asking to get any more luck here considering how lucky we got last episode. So our Zygomites have actually breeded and grown up into adolescence. So now it's time for us to harvest these. Do not worry if they're dead because the actual price that people pay for these doesn't change whether they're dead or alive. People buy these strictly to get beans and you get the same amount of beans whether they're alive or whether they're dead. So if they die, don't worry about it. Just gather it, gather the produce and remove it from the pen. Please note that you won't get as much XP for gathering a dead Zygomite, but this is strictly a money-making method and not to be used for XP. In terms of all of these adolescent ones, if you are able to get ones with three traits or two traits, you may be able to sell them for more to other players that want to pay for that, especially if they have some useful traits on there such as Joyful, Studly, or Immune. I personally don't bother doing this and I just sell them for adolescent price because I can't be bothered with the hassle. But if you have the time and actually want to set up some sales, you will be able to make a bit more money. At the current prices, you're able to sell these for 300k each. So in that harvest, we've just made 1.2 mil. And you can do this passively forever, theoretically. Like, you don't need any inputs. You literally just come here and take them out once they're grown. There's nothing more to it. And you're going to make yourself some easy money on your account. Damn, we've literally done two criminal bolt runs in the past two days. And look how much money we've made from them. That is 7.1 mil in two runs. I've probably got insanely lucky. But yeah, do your criminal bolt runs. They're just as, if not more important than your herb runs to make profit. Okay, so the current rotation at Araxor is 2-3 and the minions are blocked. And we have a Reaper's Choice on which task we can get. So I'm going to pick Araxi and I'm going to go kill six of these and see how we can do it with our melee setup without any of the abilities and whatnot and see how we can go. And hopefully we can get ourselves a drop or two and make some decent money. Okay, so I'm just about to go to do some Araxor. And this is the preset that I'm going to be going with. I have no idea if one super restore is going to be enough. I don't really know how long the kills are going to be with this setup. I haven't done melee Erexor in a very long time. And even when I did do it, we had things like a Saren Godbo, ZGS specs, all of that good stuff. But this is the preset that we're going with. We have runes for disruption shield and we have power burst of vitalities. They are the big items that you're going to want to make sure you bring. These will help you reduce the amount of damage that you can take in the last phase. And that's very important when using any style at Erexor. Obviously, it's possible to do it without them, but this is what we're going to opt to go with. We don't have any weapons at a scythe range other than the Lanakaya's spear, and the Lanakaya's spear isn't actually very good here because of the accuracy. So we're going to be using a superior Vesta spear, but if you are just learning this boss, I definitely recommend having a Dragon Rider Lance or a scythe so that you can stand out of melee distance and not have to worry about his melee swipes. But I am going to just prayer flick through the melee swipes, and we also have a Vampirism Scrimshaw to help us sustain our health as well. So let's go see how this goes. And I'll see if I can give you guys any tips on the journey. And maybe we'll even get a drop or two. In terms of PR, my PR is 2 minutes and 4 seconds. And yeah, this, this is really going to hurt to reset. Because this took me a little bit of time to get. And that's achieved by getting the skip. But yeah, that, that's 2 minutes 4 gone. That, like, that is so upsetting to do. But overall it will make killing these bosses a lot more fun for me because i can actually see my progression we have 1333 kills and all we're missing from the log is an araxes web and for those of you wondering our perk setup we have bite into venom blood crackling four and relentless five impatient four and enhanced devoted four and then on our weapons we have precise six and equilibrium venom blood's a great perk here because then you don't have to worry about the anti-poison but if not just use anti-poison plus plus you can drink one dose of that and it will last you a very long time so don't worry if you don't have Venom Blood. And we're going to be using the Berserker Aura here. I wouldn't really recommend doing it off of Berserk Aura. And we're going to be using a Ripper Demon as well to increase the amount of damage that we can do. You don't want to use the Scrolls because Orexi and Orexor are both immune to the Scrolls. But the passive effect that lets you deal more damage the lower your opponent's health is, is really useful with the Ripper Demon. Okay, let's jump straight into this. I have no idea how this is going to go. But it should be fun nonetheless. I'm going to be doing Bottom Path as well for those of you wondering. And there we go, that's our first kill at 3 minute 32. We didn't really use any food. Like, like I said, I'm pretty rusty. But let's see if we can get a drop. Eh, 844k, not too bad. And we got some bruises as well. Surprised we were able to get ourselves a 3 minute 30 kill on our first one. I'm literally, my prayer swapping and everything is so rusty at the moment. But we'll improve that over time. There we go, that's kill number 2. Let's see what we're able to get. Oh, Onyx Bolts. Nice, that's a mil. Can't complain at that at all. Still floating around the 3 minute 30 mark as well. As soon as you go into this phase, if you spam click your surge button, it will let you build adrenaline. And then you can use one more defensive if you're not at 
That's kill number three, and we're able to get us... Oh my god, Hydrix bolt tips are so expensive right now. That's two mil from one kill. These used to be like 400k for the drop. And obviously because range is insane now, and Hydrix bolts with Gricko, go brew, that has gone up significantly. Kill number four? Eh, only 492k. Nice, another load of Onyx Bolts, even more than before, and that's 1.8 mil. Even without any of the abilities and that, we're able to make a decent amount of money. Like, this boss gets significantly easier when you get Greater Barge. And there's a ton of things that I can do to improve how optimal we're being as well. There we go, that's our 290th Reaper task done. And we got 40 Reaper points from that. And that's the end of the task, so... Oh my god, no way. <laughs> We've already got ourselves a spider leg bottom on the series. Bro, that, that is insane. How we spoon fed that already in six kills. I wasn't expecting that at all. Like, what the hell, man? That's all I can do at the moment. But we, we're on track for getting 12 kills an hour. And I did have to take like a five minute break in between there. Like, the kills are consistently just over three minutes 30. So it really isn't going to be that bad at the moment. There's a lot of optimization that I need to do personally on the preset and just in terms of using melee in general. It'll be a lot easier if we were able to get ourselves a Dragon Rider Lance as well. So that may be an upgrade we want to grab for this in the future. But I do want to try this out with range. So that is on the cards. Whenever Araxo does his web special attack when he starts healing, when you're using melee, you want to click away from the boss so that you don't continue attacking him or using abilities. This is especially important if you use Revolution. And then you can actually opt to use a Quake, put on a shield, and then use Resonance. If you do this as quick as you possibly can, the damage that your Quake deals onto him will be reflected back to you. But because you use Resonance, it will actually give you a nice juicy heal. At higher enrages, this can literally replenish all of your health, and it's definitely something you want to get in the habit of doing for all of the combat styles. The reason we use Quake is because it's a slow hitting ability. If you use a fast hitting ability, like a Cleave, you won't have enough time to actually get your resonance off. That's why we opt to use a Quake. In terms of phase one, I don't do anything special. I don't use Berserk. At the start, I barge the boss. Don't worry, I don't use the actual bleed ability. I barge just to get in combat with him straight away. And when I'm on the boss, all I do in the first phase is use your bleeds and your strong threshold abilities. So assault and destroy. If you're using a lance, you will want to be using hurricane so that you can stay out of melee distance. But yeah, there's nothing too special on phase one. If you are struggling to get his hit points down before the web burns... You can Berserk on Phase 1 and use a Berserk Rotation, similar to the one that we use at Vindicta, and that should help you get him down to less than 5k health before 1 minute hits. In terms of Phase 2, my biggest bit of advice that I can give you guys is unlock Bladed Dive and get Double Surge and make sure you have a mobile switch on your gear. I personally opt to use an Excalibur with mobile one for this phase, because at higher in rages, if you spend too much time in the darkness... <sighs> Darkness is your ally. You will take a lot of damage and it will add up. You can actually use defensives while on this phase to help save yourself a bit of food or get yourself some heals. For example, you can use a resonance with a shield whenever one of the range or magic hits come down. Because we're using melee, it will be more beneficial for you to actually get a heal from the magic hit because it has more chance of actually hitting you and not splashing. You can also use devotion and reflect if you wanted to. If you are struggling with food consumption, you will want to use Devotion on this phase. Just make sure your characters come out of combat before using it. That way it won't actually use any Adrenaline and you will have full Adren ready for the next phase. So on phase 3, you want to kill this as quick as you possibly can. The reason you want to do this is because it's not time gated like phase 1 and 2. The time that you get on this phase actually will increase the amount of kills an hour if you're able to skim some seconds off. If you had a ZGS, you would be able to Berserk on this phase and completely smash through it. But obviously where we don't have any other damage boosting abilities than Berserk, we want to save our one for the last phase. So specifically what I do here, as soon as I come out of bottom path, I'll right click on Araxor as he's going up and then I'll barge straight to him. And it's very similar to P1. All you want to do is focus strong basic abilities. You want to use Decimate, Cleave and Sever. You want to prioritize using your strong thresholds in the form of Hurricane, Destroy and Assault. And then you want to also focus on using all of your bleeds. And they will be your Dismember, your Slaughter and your Blood Tendrils. Remember, if you're going to be using Slaughter, make sure to right click and walk underneath a Raxor when doing so to triple the damage. And if you focus on doing strong basic thresholds and bleeds, you should be able to get this phase down within two to maybe three special attacks with the gear setup that we have. 
And then on the final phase, you want to make sure you have 100% adrenaline before ending P3. You can get away with having 85% adrenaline on this phase. And then you can spam surge in the cutscene and follow that by a basic ability like freedom or anticipate. And that will get you up to 100% adrenaline. However, if not, you can opt to actually bring dummies here. But just remember that will add a cost onto the amount that you spend an hour doing this. And then all I do on this phase, I use a disruption shield before the phase even starts. Stand in melee distance and use berserk will protect from melee on while prayer swapping. You want to always have Protect from Melee on, and if you see him launch out an Acid Magic Attack, you want to then swap to Protect from Mage, but remember as soon as that Magic Attack hits, you want to instantly swap straight back to Protect from Melee, it's very important. At higher Rages, something else you can do on the last phase, before you use Berserk, you can use Devotion, and this will make it so that the first 2-3 to three hits from a Rexor will hit 1, assuming you Prayer Swap properly. At lower Rages, this won't be necessary though. So the plan at the moment, I'm going to quickly do a herb run and then I'm going to go AFK Gregorovich for like another two hours. Fingers crossed we can get ourselves a drop because we still have so many upgrades that we actually need on the account. I'll be honest with you, I weren't planning on doing this much Gregorovich, but it's so chill in AFK. Like anytime I need to do anything else, I may as well do it because it's so much money. I do want to unlock on the account Crystal Shapeshifters. It's a method I've never done before. And that is on the cards in the distant future. And it'd be fun to actually make a video testing out how good crystal shapeshifters are nowadays. So if any of you have got crystal shapeshifters in your personalized Slayer dungeon, let me know how they are and how AFK they are. Not the drop we're looking for, unfortunately. That's the second Slisk Essence we've had this hour. And we've had a dormant Anima Core Legs. So no luck so far. Either way, the base loot that you actually get from doing this is still really nice. So we're still going to be making some progression regardless if we get a drop or not. And to be fair, the Sliski and Essences, both of them are going to add up to about 1.2 mil, which is still nice. Alright, so there's that invent done. We made another 5.5 mil, not including any of the cash that we got. So at the moment, I have 41 elites and 41 hards in the bank. And I want to actually do these. I'm still about 2,000 points off the Globetrotter outfit, which I want to get so that we can make a ton of money from doing clue scrolls. It's something I wouldn't normally do, but with the prices of dies right now, it's really not that bad to get into clues. So yeah, I'm either going to do these clue scrolls, do some Slayer, or do some more bossing. I'm not too sure yet. We'll see. So a bit of a random one, but I was going to see how much you can make AFK in the melee elves. They have decent drops, and I think if you can kill like 600 of them an hour, you will be able to make like well over 10 mil. So I'm going to see how much we can make an hour killing them, and I'll let you know if it's any good. Yeah, and this is pretty much going to be it. I'm going to see how many kills we can get an hour, and then how much money we can make an hour with that many kills. And I'll let you guys know if it's worth doing this method or not. I'm not going to lie, this is looking to be like 880 kills an hour, completely AFK. And if it is that much, it's 11 mil GP that you can make an hour doing this method. You don't need a Vampirism Scrimshaw. Don't need the tier 99 prayer. Like, th this is going to be some insane AFK money, and I'm glad I randomly just started doing this. The money is pretty much always going to be good as well, because a lot of it's in Alks, and most of it's also in Qualms, Irrits, and Cadentines. And all of these are ingredients that you need for Herblor, so these are always going to be in high demand. Alright, so the hour is just about to finish up, and it, this has been really successful. Like, we've nearly made 6 million just in cash. But I'll quickly kill this one here. And then that's it. That's the hour done. We are able to get ourselves 875 kills an hour. But from that hour alone, we are able to make ourselves 11.3 mil. And they have a decent drop chance of elites and hard clues if that's something you're into. So yeah, this method's going to be consistently 11 mil an hour. If you're able to get 870 kills an hour. So definitely something you may want to consider on your account if you like doing AFK Slayer creatures. I've just finished making the guide on AFK and Elves, and boy oh boy have we made some bank from doing this. I'll chuck on screen how much I've made AFK in these from my room metrics. In the past day or two, we've killed over 12,000 of them, which is roughly 13.6 hours of complete AFK time. And we've made 162 million according to room metrics. If we take a look on RuneScape at how much we've actually made in the last sitting, I put all of my loot and cash stack in the bank so we can track how much we made. But like, Jesus Christ, we made 68.1 mil in one sitting last night. And that's not including the stone spirits. It's not including the loot you'd get from the clue scrolls. All of these crystal armor and crystal weapon seeds. It's also not including the loot that we've got from the Trisk pieces. Like, if we go take a look in the bank. So here's all of the loot that I've got on my account from AFK and these so far. We've got a ton of Trisk keys. I don't know the drop rate of these, but we've got... 12 of them in total that's another four elite clue scrolls for when i want to do them 
We've completely capped out all of our hards and elite clues from doing it as well. But in terms of the loot from this, and this isn't including any of the cash drops from over half of the kills, but we got 112 mil from that. And the only cost that I pretty much had for doing this was the vampirism scrimshaw and the overloads. As all of you are aware from the series, we have so many vamp scrimshaws from ports. So I don't even really like including that as a cost. But yeah, 111.8 mil plus a ton of cash that we didn't keep track of. That is absolutely insane. We're going to have over 230 mil to play with on the series. And we also have 50 hard and elite clue scrolls to complete. I'm now going to go to the Fremenic province and I will open up the crystal Triskillians that we've got there. Because you can also get a decent amount of loot from them. I don't know what the average GP per Trisk is, but it's probably around 200k. It might even be more. You can get lucky. Obviously, the big thing for these is we get four guaranteed elite clue scrolls, which is really nice. 50k on the first one. 368k. Nice, not too bad. Most of that's coming from the dwarf weeds and torsals, I want to say. 137k. And we got another Trisk key, so that's another third of an elite clue when we complete that eventually. And last but not least, uh, 76k. Not, not the best. As I said, we're here for the elite clues. We've got 54 elites to do, and we're going to have a blast doing them, and it's going to get us even closer to getting our Globetrotter outfit. Another yield from our player-owned farm, 1.5 mil profit in just the unchecked Zygomites. All of our other Zygos have bred, so that will give us another chunk of profit. All of our other Zygomites have bred as well, so when they grow up into Adolescent, that'll be another 1.2 mil. And from all the Adolescent Dragons that we've got, we should be able to make 1.5 mil. Yeah, this is going to keep adding up over time. Do your player own farm. So I've begun the clue grind with five clues in and I've just got my first Keldegrim step. And if you want to do this optimally, you want a luck of the dwarves. So I'm going to invest 70 mil into this, but this is not an item we're going to be keeping. I will most likely be selling this back at some point after doing all of our clues. But for now, that's a 71 mil investment. It shouldn't change in price too much and worst case, we'll lose a couple mil. But it's going to be well worth using specifically for this Keldegrim step. Another great mobility item that you can have for elite clues is the spheres that you can buy from Oldak in the Dorgish Khan. You make these by using Molten Glass and Law Runes. And you just want to get the first option and make as many of these as you can. And these will teleport you straight here for any future clue steps. So I've just done 30 elite clues in one sitting. I'm not going to lie, I need a break. I'll finish the other 23 later. I'm going to go AFK some more elves and see if we can make a little bit more money. And we'll probably even get some more elite clues doing that as well. So I'll finish these off later. A quick update with three clues off our 250th elite, which is going to give us a ton more treasure trail points. And I'm not going to lie, the backpack's so nice for swapping out the clues that you don't want to do. And I cannot wait to get the top so that we can do clues even quicker. Finally, we have them all done. But man, they take so long to complete. We have 63 elite caskets and fingers crossed we can make some decent money from these. I'm also going to put on room metrics. That way you can see exactly how much money we've made without having to price check everything. Let's get into this. Show me the money. We'll re-roll this one. Not what you want to see. No one wants an effigy from these. I suppose we haven't got the effie pet yet, so it's not the end of the world. There we go. Nice. We got our first master from these. Hopefully we can get ourselves a ton of these. That way we can do more clues and get even more chances of getting a big ticket item. So instead of boring you guys with five minutes worth of clips with me opening these, I'm just going to summarize the opening. Not going to lie, the loot from these clues was horrendous and nothing interesting happened. Rarely any fortunates, any cool interesting clues, like we didn't get any doubles, we didn't get really any triples, and mainly just junk items. Thankfully we were able to get ourselves a ton of master clues and we now have 19 of them in the bank. And hopefully from these we can have more luck and make a bit more money. Regardless... In total, we were able to make ourselves 46.5 million, which is still progress towards some upgrades on the account. But when you consider I could have made much more money AFK and Elves, it's pretty bad. That being said, this is the game that you play when you do clue scrolls. And in another world, we could have lucked out and got a big ticket item. And in all honesty, doing clue scrolls and grinding them and getting fast at them is pretty fun. And the thrill of opening caskets, knowing that you could literally make over 5 billion GP is what makes them so fun for me. So we're going to definitely continue doing our clues in this series. And I also break up the grind from PVM and Slayer, which is so important to avoid burning out. Also, there's been a ton of quality of life fixes for clues. They've added so many teleports to the game. You can now stack up to 50 of them, making it so that you can do as many as you pretty much want at a time. You can downgrade them. There's so many things that you can do with clue scrolls, making them a lot more fun to actually do. In this episode, we made a ton of money. So let's sell all of the loot from everything we've done and see how much we've made in total. In my event, we have pretty much all of our disposable GP on the account. I can sell the Luck of the Dwarves if we need to, and all of these alkable items will make us some money in our invention machines. We have 244 mil in straight cash and a leg piece, which we can finish off at Araxa at some point to make some easy money, 
if we get the drops. But considering YouTuber luck is on our side, that shouldn't be a problem. And if we sell our luck of the dwarves and wait for all of these to out, we're so close to getting our first major upgrade on the account. In total, we have 324.5 million like, of disposable income once all of this is sold. And we can either grab ourselves a scythe to make a Rexor easier, be useful for certain Slayer tasks, and overall be a pretty good melee weapon. Or we can go straight for Greater Barge. Both of these will be huge upgrades for the account and they'll change how we PVM drastically. At some point, I would like to get a baseline range set up so that we can unlock some other content in the form of Nex, AFK, Armor Deal, all of that fun stuff. And we do also want to get some magic gear on the series so that we can use magic to AFK some certain mobs, do some certain Slayer tasks, all of that fun stuff. But yeah, we made a ton of progress in this episode. I'm having a ton of fun doing this series. Like, I'm not going to lie, it really is fun. And I'd recommend it out there to anyone that's just burnt out with the game. That's everything I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by hitting the like button. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. And thank you all for watching.